Hello, little friends. Gyan Kosh is back with yet another interesting topic. I hope you're watching all the videos and learning from there. So today we are going to learn about matter and materials. So can any one of you tell me what is matter? Okay. So matter is anything that occupies space and has mass. So for example, everything around us, you see, air, water, soil, rocks, plants, animals, and even the ourselves are made up of matter. So now there are three states of matter. Let us see which. So matter exists in three forms. That is solid, liquid, and gas. And water exists naturally in all of these states. So other than water, all other matters are in one of the states. But water exists in all three states. How? We will see going forward. So now let us discuss each of these states in detail. Solid. Solids, you see, have a fixed shape. So for example, if you see any item, any object around you, for example, maybe the chair you're sitting on or the table you're writing on is a solid object. And it has a fixed shape, right? You cannot change its shape. So that is the property of solid. Solids have a fixed shape. And it cannot be changed even if you press it hard or even if you try to move it from one place to another, you cannot change its shape. Similarly, it cannot be compressed. And solids, because they have a fixed shape, they do not flow. Now, examples of solid are wood, chalk, brick, detergent bar, cloth, etc. And as I mentioned, we cannot change the shape of solid, but we can just change it to an extent in some cases like the sponge when it is pressed. Right? Okay. Now moving on to liquid. Now liquids do not have a fixed shape like the solid, but they definitely have a definite volume. And liquids, they take the shape of the container in which they are kept. For example, when you pour water into a bottle, see, it takes the shape of the bottle, right? And the same water, if you put it into a glass, it takes the shape of the glass. And another property of liquid is they cannot be compressed easily. So the volume remains the same, right? You cannot compress it. And liquids flow like water, milk, oil, petrol juices all these are liquids and they flow you must have spilled it sometimes right so you know they flow now moving on to gas now gas like solid or liquid neither has definite shape nor definite volume and they can be easily compressed they flow more easily than liquids and they take up all the space available to them unlike a liquid they do not just take up a small space but they take up the entire space available to them so gases have to be kept in closed containers most of the gases cannot be seen right i mean you breathe in oxygen every day but can you see it no right so similarly you cannot see most of the gases example of gases are oxygen nitrogen carbon dioxide etc. Now coming to the changes in state of matter. Now matter can change its state. How? Let's see. Matter can be changed from one state to another by heating or by cooling. The process by which a solid changes into liquid on heating is called melting. Like ice cubes when you heat ice cubes, what will happen? They will turn into water. So this change in form from solid to liquid is called melting. Now, 
the process by which a liquid changes into gas when heating is called evaporation you must have seen right when you boil water you can see water vapors so that is called evaporation now the process by which gas changes into liquid on cooling is called condensation so you can try this experiment at home ask your mother to help you with it take a water in a vessel and heat it and once it starts boiling keep a lid over it and after a few minutes check the lid you will see water droplets on it so the water vapors that were coming out of the water when they hit the lid because the temperature of the lid is cold it condenses and it cools down and changes into water droplets this process is called as condensation and the process by which liquid changes into solid on cooling is called freezing now all of us know this when we keep water in the free freezer's compartment of the refrigerator what happens it changes into ice cubes and this process is called as freezing now in some cases what happens is solids directly change into gases without going to the liquid state this is called sublimation this happens in very rare cases such as the napkin balls or the camphor that we use you know in uh, pujas and all when we so in such cases the solid directly changes into the gas like the naphthalene balls that are kept between the clothes they get reduced in size or disappear completely this happens due to the change of balls into gaseous form on getting the warmth from the clothes all right now let us see different kinds of materials now the substance of which a thing is made of is called material for example the table that we are using to write or study is made up of wood so wood here is the material so examples of material are wood steel rubber paper plastic glass etc now same material can be used to make different kinds of things like iron can be used to make knives utensils buildings etc similarly same object can be made from different kinds of material like a tumbler can be made of a glass or plastic or even of steel some objects can be made from a combination of several materials like the book which you use to write every day is made up of different materials like the paper ink glue isn't it now the properties and uses of materials wood wood is obtained from trees it is hard and strong and is used to make tell me right doors furniture handles etc paper paper is obtained from trees again it is light and flexible and it is used to make books knives envelopes etc rubber rubber comes from the rubber tree it is flexible and waterproof and is used to make gloves toys tires etc glass glass is made from sand it is hard waterproof and transparent material and it is used to make utensils window panes decorators you have wind chimes and all of glass right yes now the metals metals come from earth they are hard strong shiny and durable they are used to make utensils vehicles buildings and bridges plastic plastic comes from petroleum which is dug from deep under the earth it is light waterproof strong and durable material it is used to make rain coats furniture your tiffin boxes buckets tumblers and a lot of other things 
Now, some materials are hard while some others are soft. Some are flexible while some are rigid. Some float on water while some sink in water. Some materials dissolve in water like sugar and salt. While some others do not like the oil. It floats, right? Some are easily breakable or fragile like the glass or some are strong like the iron. Some absorb liquids and are not waterproof. Tell me what? Right, cotton. While some others are waterproof like the plastic. We use reinforcements of plastic, right? Now coming to the measurement. Measurement, what do you mean by measurement? Yes, it is the process of measuring something. We need measurements to measure the distance from one place to another, the height of a person, or the length of a piece of a cloth, or the quantity of milk pot, etc. A unit is a fixed quantity that is used as a standard of measurement. Now, coming to the measurement of length. You know, in the early days, people used to use their body parts to measure length. Surprising, isn't it? But that time, there was no standard unit of measurement. And then people used to use their hand span or foot span, stride and cubit to measure the length. Since different people have different body parts and of different sizes, so the hand span, foot span, cubit are non-standard units of measurement because it will differ from person to person. And thus, there was a need of some standard unit to measure different things. And the standard unit of measuring thing of measuring length is meter. For measuring small lengths, we use centimeter as the unit of measurement. While for measuring longer lengths, we use meter as the unit of measurement. We measure distance between places in kilometers. While the lengths are measured using measuring tapes, measuring rods, rulers, etc. Now measurement of mass. Mass is the amount of matter in an object. It tells us how much a thing weighs. The commonly used units for measuring mass are grams for measuring light objects and kilograms for measuring heavy objects. Kilogram is written as kg and gram is written as small g. Manual weighing balance and electronic balances are the common instruments used for weighing. You must have seen these weighing scales and balances in grocery shops, right? Now, measurement of capacity. The quantity or the amount of liquid which a container can hold is called its capacity. The standard unit of measuring capacity is liter. Small amounts of liquids are measured in milliliters and large amounts are measured in liters. A measuring cylinder is used to measure the amount of liquid. A measurement of time. Time is measured in hours, minutes and seconds. It is measured using a clock or a watch. Measurement of temperature. Temperature tells us how hot or cold a body or an environment is. It is measured in degrees Celsius or degrees Fahrenheit. The normal body temperature of humans is, you know what? It is 98.4 degrees Fahrenheit or 37 degrees Celsius. Mama measures your body temperature sometimes when she feels you might have fever, right? Yes. So a clinical thermometer is used in such cases. You must have seen it at home. So that is used to measure the temperature of our body. Nowadays, Digital thermometer is used to measure the temperature of our body and a room thermometer is used to measure the room temperature. So, here we come to the end of our topic. Tell me, how did you find it? I hope it was interesting and informative. Do keep visiting for such more such informative and interesting topics. See you till then. Bye-bye.